In this video, I'm going to cover how to respond to an objection in your writing, which is part of the assignment for research essay two. So in the instructions, um, you're told to acknowledge at least one potential objection. So this objection may come up in your thesis, one of your supporting arguments, um, a warrant, or um, maybe some other statement or some evidence that you present in your paper. So with this objection, you need to refute it um, to the best of your ability. Um, and secondly, uh, there's a note of be mindful of your warrants and back them up in your paper. So backing up a warrant is a good way to incorporate some research into your paper. So if you don't address an objection in your paper at some point, uh, it, you will lose eight points um, in the rubric. So why should we address objections? Um, so first off, when you were doing your research, you may have come across uh, viewpoints that differ from your position on this topic or even evidence that disproves your argument. So good writers and researchers don't hide from these objections, but they address them in their paper. And the reason they do this is because they assume um, that their reader is informed on the issue and will notice if they ignore this well-known argument or piece of evidence. So your goal is to address this objection in the hopes of convincing your reader to agree with you that you have the best position um, and the more persuasive uh, evidence on your side. Now, I do want to make one little note. Sometimes it's easy to get a bit paranoid um, and view objections and disagreements from your reader uh, at every possible turn. Uh, don't go that far. Really just pick for this essay one objection or question that you think your reader will have when reading your paper and focus on addressing um, that one point. So um, the first thing you need to do is determine where is this objection going to come up in your paper. So consider this, which piece of evidence or claim do you feel will raise the biggest um, objection from the reader? Um, will this come up in your thesis? your main argument? Will it come up with uh, your evidence, so maybe with one of your body paragraphs? Or is this objection going to be kind of underlying and they're going to disagree with uh, one of your assumptions or beliefs, or i.e. one of your warrants? So you need to identify where this objection is going to come up so that you can then refute it or address it. So once you've done that, then consider, all right, I have this objection. How am I going to counter it? What reasons or evidence do I have to back up my position. So hopefully in your research you encountered some data or statistics or examples of some kind that can help you refute uh, what your opposition's objection is or what your reader's objection is. Um, then a third question, which is optional, is maybe in doing your research you came across your opposition or an opposing view of um, that, uh, an opposing view on this topic and maybe you can incorporate this into your paper. So sometimes showing your reader what the uh, objection is firsthand and then countering it with your own evidence can be really powerful and persuasive. So if you did come across a quote or an article from your opposition, feel free to incorporate that into your writing and that can make um, your position appeal, uh, appear even stronger to your reader. Now, one note, most often you are going to address your opposition in the body of your paper, so those three middle paragraphs, but sometimes you may want to introduce your opposition a little earlier um, in your introduction. So introduction approach four, uh, which is um, addressing an opposing argument that has been developed, and approach six, which is where you refute a common belief. These could be good ways to introduce your opposition in your paper. Um, if you do include your opposition in the introduction, make sure that you respond to it somewhere within the body of your paper and explain how your evidence is uh, disproving that objection that you introduced in the beginning of the paper. So here are a couple templates that can help you. Um, so you always want to acknowledge the disagreement of your um, opposition and their objection. You can say, my evidence proves, explain what it proves, and then you can acknowledge your opposition by saying, however, could name them, maybe it's a specific name or a group of people, um, they assert that blank. This is a valid point, but it is not taken into account. So then explain how your evidence kind of disproves or argues against their evidence. If you have a specific quote from your opposition, you can kind of name them. 
um, state what they believe and why they believe it, what's their evidence, and say uh, this is supported by people like, name the author, who say, and then give the quote, give what they say. Then you can counter by saying, however, they don't consider blank. Then you can introduce your opposition. So if you need some more help with templates and incorporating your opposition, you can go to our course page under content, scroll down till you see the writing process page. And then from this page, which you're familiar with, scroll all the way to the very bottom and where it says templates for introducing your opposition, you will find um, other resources to help you with this page.